Let's talk now about second order differential equations. In particular, let's talk about second order linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. That was a lot of caveats, so let's try and unpack that. So first, second order refers to the differential equation having its higher derivative being a second derivative. Linear means that each term in the differential equation has only one power of the function x of t or its derivatives. Homogeneous means that the right-hand side of this differential equation here is zero. Uh, if this were some function f of t, which doesn't multiply, say, x, um, then we would call that inhomogeneous. And finally, constant coefficients means that the coefficients of each of these terms are, in fact, just constant numbers uh, and are not functions of t. There could, in principle, be a constant in front of the second derivative as well, but you can always divide that out so that the coefficient of the second derivative is always 1, and that's kind of our standard form. So how would we solve a differential equation that looks like this? Well, there's a general technique, which is called guess and check. And the strategy there is we recognize that a, a general solution of a second order differential equation should have two arbitrary constants. And so if you can make a clever guess to find a solution and it has two arbitrary constants, it must be the solution. This seems maybe a little disappointing that there isn't a better way to solve a differential equation, a second order differential equation, but it turns out this is one of the better strategies that there is to guess and check. And the game is just to figure out good guesses. When you have constant coefficients, it turns out there is a set of really good known guesses, which we'll talk about in just a second. But let's just make a guess of what a solution could look like. I don't know. Let's make a guess x of t is something that looks like t squared. Let's make a guess for that and see if this works in our guess and check approach to solving this differential equation. There's no reason that this should work. We just picked a random function, x of t is equal to t squared, but let's just see where it might fail. So in order to check this, we need to take its first derivative and its second derivative so that we can plug that into the differential equation. So the first derivative is 2t, the second derivative is just 2. So let's plug these into the differential equation itself and see if this is a solution. So the first term gives us a 2, then we get minus 4 times 2t, so I guess that's minus 8t, plus 3 times t squared. And if this were a solution to this differential equation, this should be equal to 0. And this is not equal to 0 for all time. It should be a solution for all time t. And so this is not a solution to this differential equation. OK, so we guessed wrong. Maybe that's not terribly surprising. We just made a random guess. Let's make a better guess. Let's guess x of t is equal to e to the t. This might seem like a reasonable guess. Our second derivative and first derivative terms need to cancel against the original term. And uh, when we take x of t goes to e to the t, it gives us the same e to the t back again. So that seems something reasonable. Let's just take the first and second derivatives. Oh, well, the first and second derivatives just give me e to the t back. So if we plug this into our differential equation, first term gives me e to the t. The second term gives me minus 4 e to the t. And the third term gives me plus 3 e to the t. Well, if you notice, it turns out that all of these terms are going to cancel on the left-hand side, so I get 0 is equal to 0. So it worked. This guess that I made, x of t is equal to e to the t, turns out to be a solution to this differential equation. In fact, I can make it a more general solution to this differential equation by saying x of t is equal to c e to the t, where c is some arbitrary constant. So there we go. I now have a solution with an arbitrary constant. So is this the general solution to my differential equation? Well, no. As we talked about on the previous slide, uh, a general solution of a second order differential equation should have two arbitrary constants. I only have one here. So I guessed half of the solution, but I need to figure out some way to guess the other half of the solution. Now, in principle, I could try and make another guess for e to the t, where maybe it looks like another e to the 2t, e to the 3t, something of that nature. But that's going to get tedious making individual guesses. And so instead, I'm just going to make a generic looking guess. I'm going to make a generic guess x of t is e to the pt for some unknown p. And in principle, I should only get some certain values of p that are actually going to work here. In particular, I have a feeling that p is equal to 1 is going to work, since we already guessed that and it seemed to work. But maybe there's some other p-values that would work that solves this differential equation. So let's take the first and the second derivatives. The first derivative brings down a power of p. The second derivative brings down a power of p squared. 
And so if I can plug these into my differential equation, I get a p squared e to the pt minus 4p e to the pt from the first derivative plus 3 times just e to the pt, and that must all equal to 0. Okay, we can simplify this by canceling out all of the e to the pt's in each of these terms, and so then I get an equation for p that looks like p squared minus 4p plus 3 is equal to 0. This is called the characteristic equation for solving this type of differential equation, and we can see that this is going to give us two solutions. It's a quadratic equation for p, so in principle there are two solutions for p. We can find those two solutions for p by using the quadratic equation, or whatever technique you love to do to solve a quadratic expression like this. And my p-values that solve this are 1 and 3. So we find that only certain values of p actually solve this differential equation when I take x of t as e to the pt. It looks like p is equal to 1 and p is equal to 3. So my original guess was x of t is e to the pt, and I found only p is equal to 1 and p is equal to 3 work. But making that generic looking guess, e to the pt, allowed me to figure out what those two values were without having to go through all possible numbers to put in the exponent there. So it looks like x of t is equal to e to the t is a solution, as I found earlier, and x of t is equal to e to the 3t is also a solution to this differential equation. Now as before, I could slap an arbitrary constant in front of each of these in order to get a gener general solution, and my claim, which we're not going to prove here, uh, but you can check, is that the general solution to this differential equation is x of t is equal to c1, some arbitrary constant, times e to the t, plus c2, some other arbitrary constant, times e to the 3t. Or more generally, I take those two solutions and I add them together, each with their own arbitrary constant in front. Okay, you can check this as a general solution by plugging it into the differential equation and finding that indeed it solves the differential equation and it has two arbitrary constants, so it must be a general solution. Let's end by talking about the more general case. So let me write down a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, but now put generic numbers out front. I'm just going to call them a1 and a0. Again, in principle, you could have an a2 in front of the second derivative, but you can always divide that out. Uh, and so this is the more general case. So I can use guess and check to solve a general differential equation of this form. And the general guess I'm going to take is, again, x of t is e to the pt, regardless of what a1 and a0 are, as long as they're numbers. Plugging that into my differential equation, I get something that looks very familiar, very similar to the previous case, except now I have a1s and a0s in places of the numbers that I had in the previous case. I can always cancel the e to the pt's. And so making this guess, x of t is equal to e to the pt, leads to, again, a quadratic equation for p. And again, we're calling that the characteristic equation for that guess, p. In general, this gives me two solutions, p1 and p2. Until I know what a1 and a0 are, I can't really write these down, at least in any um, useful way. But I know that there should be, in general, two solutions to this quadratic formula. And so my solutions will be of the form x of t is equal to p, e to the pt, but I have two p's that I can choose, so I can write that as x of t is equal to e to the p1 of t and e to the p2 of t. And as in the previous case, my claim, and again it's worth checking, is that the general solution is I just take those two solutions, e to the p1 of t, e to the p2 of t, I add them together, each with their own arbitrary constant out front, and that this is the general solution to this second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. Okay, it may seem that that's a particularly limited case of solving this second-order differential equation, but this type of second-order differential equation shows up a lot in very interesting situations, and so it's really useful to have a general technique for solving it. And this is that general technique.